And now, you're tuned in to RBLR, the home of Tampa Bay's Reveler Sports. Hey there, Buccaneers fans. Welcome to RBLR Bucks, where we bring a dose of Florida sunshine straight to your ears. I'm Usab, your co-host. And I'll tell you this, listeners, we have our first big thing of the offseason coming up in about 15 days from now, and that's the NFL Draft. Do we draft the quarterback first round and replaces Baker, or do we draft our realistic needs first? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. And what you'll find out very soon, listeners, is who are some offensive linemen and edge rushers this draft that our beloved Buccaneers can scoop up? And reminder that we've been dropping some spicy mock drafts on our social media accounts, so feel free to share your thoughts on there. And also feel free to like and subscribe if you like what you hear. Well, joining me tonight on the pod, a Buccaneer through and through, ready to dissect every play and celebrate every touchdown, he is Mr. Carter Brantley. Carter, quick question for you. If you haven't already planned out your draft day fit, uh, what is it? What you rocking, man? Um, I'm probably going to be rocking the Derek Brooks creamsicle jersey. I think I've worn it on an episode before. Um, That's my go-to. Yeah, man. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's it's a go-to. It's a classic. Uh, I got it for like 30 bucks off this sketchy website that I will. Never oh, man, you, you have to let me know about that website as well. <laughs> for sure. I need, I, need, I need to work on my I need to work on my uh, Jersey stock. Uh, it's it's absolutely in the trenches uh, right now. All I have is an alarm clock. Mike Evans jersey. Uh, <laughs> I have a Rob Gronkowski Buccaneers jersey, which I'm repping right now. And my Derek's Brooks jersey you know everyone has that one kind of like prize possession jersey that you know you want to save only for like special moments for sure uh that was the Super Bowl Devin White edition Ah. uh but yeah I'm I'm gonna have to uh I don't know (laughs) man it just doesn't feel right rocking that anymore um it just sucks knowing that yeah I got two jerseys that I don't know if I can really well, I mean, I think Gronkowski's fine. It was a legendary oh, yeah. moment that he was with the Buccaneers, but uh, the, the yeah, the Devin White one is mixed feelings. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Devin White's fine though. Like he's, it's not like he yeah. did anything really weird off the field or anything. Like that's true. A, yeah, you know, it's not a a Rays shortstop number five jersey who who shall not be named. Um, you know, it's it's just Devin White. You know, like it's. Yeah, it just plays the Eagles, which that's you know screwed up in its own way, but it's not it's not nearly the level that I think would require you to disown the jersey or anything. I think you're good. To start that's off. true, man. Yeah, just yeah. sucks to see how the way it uh, the way it ended, but yeah. oh well. I mean, hey, that's you know, business. Exactly, it's 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 a business, baby. It's a business. Um, yeah. yeah. As we, as you mentioned, we've got some great stuff coming up. Uh, we're talking about the interior offensive line and edge rushers. Um, it's not quite the number one, but man, it's real close. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Bucks go first round on either of these positions um, or second round or what have you. Um, and uh, obviously we're missing our boy Zach Blaine today, but he is coaching a baseball game, I believe, with his kids. So, hey, good luck to him. I hope he's hope he's, uh, you know, channeling his inner Kevin Cash, you know, for all the Tampa Bay fans out there, for all the Rays fans. Um, you know, he's pulling the pitcher after the third time through the lineup, you know, shifting a little bit and plumbing all that stuff. But uh, he'll be back with us next week and uh, he'll be talking about his mock draft that he did and that he posted on, on our socials. And, uh, you know, it'll be real exciting next week. We'll be talking about cornerbacks. Um, but without further ado, we'll get into it. Um, it's the interior offensive line. Um, and we'll start with round one or two. Um, I'm going to, I'll kick things off. He's my favorite player in this draft for the Bucs. Um, I'm not sure he'll last for the Bucs because he's the consensus best center in this draft class. He was the Remington Award winner. I am talking about Jackson Powers Johnson. Uh, he's out of Oregon. Um, I know Zach Blaine, if he were here, he would have all kind of things to say about Oregon Ducks, but you know, he's not. So we're getting away with it a little bit. Um, but yeah, he's only 21 years old, which I thought was shocking for someone. You know, you think of those big boy interior offensive linemen, they're usually, you know, four year starters. They're sticking it out in college. Um, but this guy, really young, um, not really any glaring weaknesses. He was, he's by far the most impressive interior offensive lineman in this draft, I think. Um, you know, I think if you want to nitpick, uh, the consensus is that he's got length issues, which, for a center, I don't know how much weight I'd put into that, but regardless, uh, JPJ, he's my favorite player in this draft class for the Bucks in round one. Um, but Musab, how about you, brother? Who's your round one or two guy for the interior offensive line? 
I, I, well, first of all, I want to say, yeah, I, I love JPJ. Uh, if you didn't choose him, I would have chosen him. Um, <laughs> I've seen a lot of people talk about him as well on the Buccaneers. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I just want to just kind of just make the statement right now to all of our listeners that, like, no one's perfect. So, oh, uh, cool. yeah, the whole the whole kind of glaring weaknesses and all that, you know, like, you know, you look at all these reports and no matter who you are, there's always going to be some weaknesses, of you course, know, in your sure, in your draft sure. profile. So, uh, and a lot of those things are fixable. So. I'll go on to my guy, uh, Zach Frazier uh, from West Virginia University. Uh, and uh, I actually had him in one of my mocks as well. Um, other than JPJ, I, th- I think this guy is an absolute stud. And I think a potential, I would probably say maybe, yeah, I'd probably say actually second rounder. Um, but here's why, though. He does whatever it takes to stop the defender. Uh, I know he's not one of those kind of like playmaker, you know, centers. But um, here's what I do know. He plays with aggression. He's a fighter. And when it comes to those 1v1 battles, he rarely gets beaten. All right. Uh, I think, you know, if you if you give him a year, I think he's going to lead the league in pancake blocks. You know, I was watching this tape, and he's an absolute bully. You know, these guys cannot get past him. Uh, a little fun fact. I didn't realize it, but someone actually commented on one of his tapes that he's actually a wrestling champ. And I was like, whoa, okay. He's a four-time wrestling champ. So it's clearly reflected in his performance. You know, he's got those kind of wrestling, you know, hand techniques and – uh, especially in those one v one battles. So um, now the kind of weaknesses, he's not super shifty or quick, uh, which is fine. But you know, it could be a concern if he's going against like top tier defensive linemen. Uh, gets pushed back, and yeah, he does get away with it um, just because it's college ball, and you know, the majority of his defenders or whatever. It's not like they're going to be making it in the big league. So I don't think that's going to cut it out in the NFL. I think he's going to be facing a lot of challenges if he's going to keep on getting pushed back. Um, but that's about it though. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big Zach Frazier guy. If the, but if JPJ doesn't fall to the bucks or maybe they decide to go to a di- in a different direction, um, he would be a really, really great round two candidate. The bucks might have to trade up a little bit to get him, but I don't think by much, I think it is a bit of a hand in glove fit for where they're at in the second round. But yeah, I'm a big Zach Frazier guy. Definitely, definitely love that selection. Um, you know, if, if they don't get JPJ, if he is taken earlier in the first round, which, understandable i think frazier is is more than a, a competent consolation prize quote unquote because good lord he's still a very very good player um but for round three and four i'll throw it right back at you brother who's who's your round three or four interior offensive line yeah man my round three or four guy um i wouldn't be surprised if he actually does get picked earlier because right now i see him at round three uh hunter nurzad center from penn state uh, first of all, he is a multi-role offensive lineman. Okay, in 2021, he played left tackle and right tackle. Uh, wow. 2022, it was actually left guard most of the time. And then in 2023, he transitioned to center, and he allowed zero sacks. Uh, he's got quick feet, good anchor, overall pretty athletic. Uh, he kind of has more of that play-making block capability compared to, as I mentioned, Zach Frazier. But uh, ideal frame, and, you know, that is nice. Uh, and he, you know, he really does latch onto the defender. I do like that a lot, but I do think that he still has a lot of work to do. Um, I just feel that, you know, there are some kind of room for improvement, uh, against especially more, uh, quicker guys. I, I just don't think that he's able to do it all the time, but overall though, I think he's an absolute stud. Uh, and I think wherever he goes, I think he's going to do well. Yeah, I mean, it's always really, really nice to have versatility. And, uh, if he falls to the third round, you're kind of drafting, maybe not immediate starters, maybe guys you want to develop. But in the meantime, while they're developing, it's really nice to have a guy you can kind of slot in in multiple roles. And Ner- and Nurzad certainly fills that role a lot more than our round one and two guys. The the two guys you mentioned previously, they're, if they if the Bucks draft them, they're, they're the starting center, or they're at least competing mm-hmm. with Robert Ainsey for that starting center position. They're not really going to be uh, very versatile, unfortunately. But that, that's okay. You know, you're spending a high enough draft pick you're probably depending on him to start. Um, but, yeah, I'm a big big Nurzad guy. He, he's a really, really quality guy out of Penn State. Uh, mine is – my dude for the round three or four selections would be Cedric Van Pran, Georgia guy. You know I love my SEC guys. Um, he's definitely a round three guy. Uh, might be a, a touch too early in regards to, you know, where he lines up in the drafting order. Uh, but, fortunately, since the Bucks have two third-round picks, picks, they could parlay it into a super early third-round pick if they really love the guy. Um, it's definitely it's definitely the sweet spot for this position. Uh, you know, if, if JPJ's there, they got to take him in the first round. 
Um, but you know, if, if they don't, or maybe they decide to pass on him for whatever reason, um, I do think that round three is the sweet spot for this position and, and Van Pran would be really, really nice. Uh, he's from New Orleans, you know, the big easy. Uh, so that'd be really fun. Uh, he's really durable in college, but also really super athletic. That's kind of a big, big strength that I found with him and all the scouting reports is that he played a lot. Um, he's definitely more of a run defender than, you know, a pass guy or a run blocker than a pass blocker but for the bucks that might be a good thing you know their run game has been so spotty these past few years um that it would be nice to kind of get a mauler in there that just kind of cleans things up on their in the run game um you know get some holes for rashad white so he's not just running into <laughs> running into a brick wall you know it'd be nice to see that um so yeah cedric van pran's my guy and uh now we'll move on to our day three guy sort of our, our hidden gems as you might say Musab. um I'll, I'll start with a michigan man uh drake nugent um, he's another center. Um, if, if you've noticed, we're focusing a lot on centers in this in this interior offensive line. A little bit less of the guard role, but that's just because you know the center position is a bit more up in the air, in my opinion. Um, you know, he's definitely a round seven guy. Um, he's a bit, you know, he's he's a bit rough around the edges, um, as will most as will be most guys in take three. Um, but he's definitely really physical, um, a hard worker, and. Michigan. I mean, shoot, what more can you say? They won the national championship last year, super successful program. Um, you're never going to find any problems really with them. Um, but you know, he's kind of mad athletically, but again, it's around, it's a day three guy. You're never going to find a perfect, perfect prospect at this point. Um, but I do really like him in the part and as practice squad type of guy, cause he's got a really, really nasty nature. That seems to be the consensus around him. Um, maybe a mini Ryan Jensen type of guy. So yeah, Drake Nugent out of Michigan. That's my day three guy. Um, how about you, Musab? Who you got? Yeah, man. I, my uh, guy is Tanner Bartolini center from Wisconsin. Again, multi-role kind of dude okay this guy actually started out as center played some tackle and guard then transitioned and kind of stayed at guard and then this last season back to center uh so at this point look uh, we better have gotten an offensive lineman by now but if not <laughs> or maybe maybe you know maybe want to bring in more competition this is the guy okay this is the perfect guy to bring on this with the support we need uh you know this guy especially because he can, you know, play multiple roles. Uh, you know, he can bring competition for even people like Cody Mock, okay, Robert Hainsey, and then uh, Sua Opeta, okay. Uh, this guy is violent with his hands, solid with the pass protections, only allowing one sack this past season. Uh, now, the only kind of weaknesses uh, is that, you know, below average arm length, and I did check multiple sites, and the general agreement is he needs to work on playing a little bit lower. But, I mean, I'll tell you this. At this point, you know, you're looking at a kind of day three guy. You're just looking for someone who can provide some depth and some competition. And I think he's a good candidate for that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like you said, if the Bucks are, are reaching for a starting offensive lineman in day three, then uh, they're not going to have a really good time with it. Um, that's for sure. But, yeah, uh, Bartolini, he would be really, really wonderful. And just like you said, a versatile piece, um, someone to fill out the roster give these guys some competitions um because like you like you said you mentioned a, 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 a peta a peta yeah Su -o -peta, i believe that's his name yeah yeah i gotta learn that name um him malk and hainsey uh brenderson from the giants you know they've got a bunch of guys that they've brought in to sort of maybe compete for the starting role but also maybe be depth pieces and uh yeah, I mean, it would just be kind of another one of those guys if they decided to go with Bartolini. But, hey, you can never have enough depth. I mean, as we've seen with the Bucks and across the NFL, injuries, unfortunately, happen crazy, crazy, crazy. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited to see where the Bucks go with this position. Um, the interior offensive line is something that's not really a super sexy pick. It's not a skill position. You know, it's not a it's not a pass rusher. It's not a quarterback. But man, if you if you can hit on a on a few interior offensive lineman picks, then you can really sap something going. Um, I think we've seen with the Philadelphia Eagles over the past few years how successful they've been. Uh, this position can really, really carry you, um, especially because the Bucks' running game has just been so atrocious these past few years. Um, and a lot of that, unfortunately, has to do with their weakness in the interior offensive line. You know, other than Ryan Jensen over the past few years, and he's been banged up, um, they just haven't really had a lot of great ones in there. Um, Ali Marpet retired. They haven't really replaced him since. Um, it's just been it's been tough. They've had to shift Luka Decky to the right tackle position. And it's been very successful, but you know it leaves a, leaves a hole. You know it leaves a little bit of a position that needs to be filled. And uh, hopefully they can take some time to to do just that with this draft class. Um, just like you can take some time if you're really looking to fill the hole in your closet. 
you can take some time to check out the shop.rblr store. Um, shop.rblrsports.com is the official name of it. Um, and you can check it out. We got Rays, Bucks, Lightning, and Rowdies gear. Uh, the Rays are about to take on the Giants this weekend at home. Um, you know, the Bucks, the draft is right around the corner, as Musab mentioned at the beginning of the episode. Get some draft gear. Uh, so then you're not stuck wearing a Devin White jersey, you know, good gracious. <laughs> you can also get some lightning gear. You know, there's a lot of celebration going on with Stamkos and stuff like that. So definitely can check that out. And, of course, the Rowdies, they're playing as we're recording the episode, I believe. So definitely check it out. Uh, we've got some great stuff for whatever your Tampa sports apparel needs are. Um, and we'll give you a promo code. That's Canon C-A-N-N-O-N-S, for 10% off your entire order. Um, so now we're getting into the second half of our episode. We'll focus on edge rushers, which – Man, they need some edge rushers because I love, I love yeah, I love Gregory. I, I think he'll be a really, really nice veteran piece. Um, you know, JTS, Yaya Diaby, Anthony Nelson, they're fine. Um, but good gracious, I, I don't I don't want to see the <laughs> what we saw in, in the Lions game this past season with the playoffs. Um, Jared Goff just got to sit there, sit there, read a book, read the paper, um, you know, call his mom, and then and then he threw the ball. You know, he just had forever and a day. Um, so yeah, the edge rushing position, definitely a top need. Uh, so we'll start round one or two, which, you know, it's very likely that the Bucks could spend a very high draft pick on this position, um, because of like uh, all the things that I just said. So Musab, who's your round one or two guy? Yeah, my guys from Penn state, Adiza Isaac. All right. Uh, I see him as a more, more of a round two kind of guy. Uh, this guy's got punishing hits, though. That's what I love about him. He is strong in the run defense with frequent drops, actually, into coverage as well, which is nice. Uh, he's good at getting, you know, in the mix with his size. And, you know, he's actually pretty good at moving sideways as well, which helps him when it comes to, you know, different kind of defensive setups. All right. Uh, and he is definitely one of those kind of people to set the edge. So uh, I love this guy. Uh, now, he's got the speed, which is amazing. But reports I've come across say that he does need to work a little bit more on, you know, making moves and using his hands more because uh, I don't think that speed is going to really be the only thing that he needs, you know, if he wants to succeed in the NFL. But these things are all kind of fixable and all that. I think that he has a very high ceiling uh, and uh, wherever he goes, I'll tell you this, he's going to be dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, speed kills, you know, and, and I love that you mentioned the the dropping back into coverage quite a bit because, I mean, with Todd Bowles' defenses, he likes to get weird with his blitz packages. You know, he likes to do all sorts of weird things. I mean, we saw JTS and Shaq dropping into coverage several times last year. So, you know, that, that coverage skill, it's not completely necessary. It's certainly not more important than his ability to get after the quarterback or anything, but it's a nice little plus to have, and Isaac certainly has that. Um, and he's a Penn State guy. You know, if you're drafting a Penn State edge rusher, I know I, I hate when people like say, oh, well, they produce this position or that position. But Michael Parsons, you know, he's, you know, he's, he's pretty good at that. He's pretty good at that. I'd, I'd say so. Um, so, yeah, if, if the if the Bucks want to go the Penn State route, which I'm bringing another Penn State guy up as my round one or two guy, I think they'll be successful. So I'll, I'll go ahead and, and break it out. Chop Robinson. I mean, good gracious with a name like that. He's got to be an edge rusher. Um, definitely a round one guy. Um, but the good news is it's not really a reach. It's not really a, it's not, you know, it's, it's kind of a perfect fit. Uh, the Bucks likely won't have to trade up to get him if they're really interested. Um, really, really high energy seems to be the consensus with this guy. Um, from all the scouting reports that I've read, they just go on and on about just how high of a motor he has, which is a great thing for obviously any position, but especially the edge. Um, Cause you know, we saw it last year with Yaya Diaby. If you've got a high motor, you can steal some sacks not even by beating your man, you know, off the edge, you can just kind of hang in there, work hard and still be hustling your tail off and you'll steal a stack every now and then. So um, that's huge for chop. Um, he's also kind of in that same mold as Isaac uh, seems to be a pattern with Penn state. Uh, he's super fast, super athletic, so he can impact the game in multiple ways. Like, like Isaac, he can kind of drop back into coverage as well. Um, you know, this is a guy that I think if, if no corners are there that the bucks like, if JPJ doesn't fall, I think Chop Robinson's the guy they got to take. He's a really, really good, really good fit for what the Bucks want to do. They love, you know, the Bucks love athletic players. You know, they got to score high on those athletic scores. And, uh, you know, Chop's one of those dudes. He's one of those uh, one of those freaks. I know that that's kind of a weird label to put on someone, but uh, he's certainly one of those guys athletically. Uh, so Chop Robinson, that's definitely a name to watch. Um, so we're moving on to round three or four um, for the edge rushing position. And I'll, I'll go with my guy first, Javon Solomon out of Troy. 
Um, he was just so stupid productive in college. I mean, just ridiculous. Even led the FBS in 2021 with 16 total sacks. Uh, he had 33 for his career. Uh, the unfortunate thing with him is that the injury bug certainly has caught him. Um, he was banged up quite a bit in college other than that 2021 season. But, you know, if, if the Bucks decide to prioritize corner, wide receiver safety, uh, interior offensive line, what have you, with the first few picks, uh, Solomon would definitely be there in the fourth round. Um, so I think he would be a really interesting guy to kind of just take a chance on, maybe just have him be another rotation player. Um, but, yeah, he's he was just so good in college that I, it, it's just it's hard to imagine that a guy like that would fall to the fourth round. But, unfortunately, like I said, with those injuries, it's kind of a risk to take a high – High profile pick, especially with Troy, you know, the level of competition. He's not exactly playing Bama every week. Um, so, you know, there's a bit of a question mark there as well. But yeah, Javon Solomon, Troy, he's my round four edge rusher, round three or four edge rusher. How about you, Musab? Who's your round three or four edge rusher? I like it, Carter. It looks like we're having a little bit of similarities in our guys. Uh, yes. My guy didn't go to Troy. My guy didn't go to Troy, but he's also what I call a small school gem. All right. And uh, I've seen reports for him, you know, uh, you know, in round three or round four. So, uh, but why well, I like this guy, he's a bulldog. All right. When I was watching his tape, he throws his arms to really get the quarterback or running back, which I just love. Okay. He's agile, he's energetic. You know, he does lack that kind of finesse, but he does compensate it with that sheer strength. Uh, so, and I just love his hustle. Now, the only kind of concern that I've seen a little bit, I've just seen some people talking about is kind of the explosiveness. Um, you know, he's not the fastest kind of guy either, but worst case, I think he becomes a role player in the rotation. Uh, if we do decide to prioritize other positions, like you mentioned, like cornerback or interior offensive lineman. Uh, so, um, but that's really about it though. I think this guy has a lot of potential. And, uh, I also, like I mentioned before with a lot of these guys, I think where he, wherever he goes, uh, I think he's going to make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, round three or four, it's not, you know, you're not looking at the blue chippers. You're not looking at the guys that are going to come in and just dominate. But, I mean, you can still get some real steals. I mean, Yaya Diaby was a round three pick, and he, I think he led rookies with sacks last year. So he, he had himself quite a successful rookie season, um, especially for a round three pick. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd be really excited to see Nealon in a Bucks uniform. Um, I love the, the bulldog description that you, that you, uh, that you threw at him. Um, that would be really exciting. Um, yeah, and, and these smaller schools guys, I mean, Khalil Mack went to Buffalo, you know, I mean, he's not exactly coming from a blue chip school. Of course, you know, we're talking about Khalil Mack here. That's a bit of a different different type of dude. But um, yeah, no, Neyland, uh, I do try to cut through the small school bias as much as I can. But at the same time, you know, I always pick like at least two or three SEC guys. So who the hell, what the heck am I talking about? But um, yeah, the small school bias can be, can come back to bite you a little bit with these picks sometimes. Um, so yeah, I'd really love to see the Bucks maybe take a chance. And with Cody Malk last year, you know, we saw it there. Uh, the Bucks seemed to be comfortable with that. Ali Marpet was another small school kind of guy. So um, yeah. I think it all I'm, comes down to, oh, you know, sorry for interrupting. I think it all just comes down to how these, some of these players adjust as well you know, i mean this happens this happens every year in every sport you know some dude comes in from a really big school doesn't perform as well as people thought and then you know some guy who does come from a little bit of a smaller school he balls out so i mean i think the the adjustment from you know college ball to professional i think is something that not everyone can do regardless of whatever institution you attended Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, I think a great point would be that, you know, these small school guys know they're small school guys, you know, they're not coming yeah. in, you know, they don't have their head in the clouds. They know, <laughs> they know the label that they're going to get because of the school that they attended and they weren't recruited very highly out by the bigger schools. Otherwise they would have gone there. Um, so they come yeah. in with a ship on their shoulder, you know, they come in real aggressive, excited to win a job. So, you know, it, it can be a bit of an advantage in that regard. Um, you know, they're not, they're not give. They're not given anything. That's for dang sure. So yeah, re really interesting to see how it all plays out. And you know, if, if they're productive at a smaller school, who's to say they can't be productive at a, at, at the NFL level? You know, if if they have success, then maybe they feel like they can translate it to the next level. Which you know, we've seen crazier things for sure. Uh, but now we'll move on to our day three guys. Who's your day three edge rusher? So. Yes, sir. My day three edge rusher is Nelson Caesar from the University of Houston. Uh, again, uh, some people do have him as early as the fifth round, actually, but I see him more of as a sixth, seventh rounder. I'll tell you this, when you're this deep into the draft, Carter, anything can happen. You know what For I'm sure. saying? Oh, so, 
Uh, size wise, not ideal. Uh, I mean, it's not like he's like super skinny either, but he makes up for it with his quickness and aggression. Okay. He actually racked up nine and a half sacks last year at Houston and, uh, visited several websites. And the general agreement is that one issue that he is battling with is, you know, bigger guys when it comes to setting the edge. Uh, but again, at this point, if you're going to get a guy on day three, uh, you're just looking for a role player, someone you can throw in the rotation. Um, I don't know if I want to just, you know, go on the high horse and say he's a hidden gem. Uh, I don't see – there wasn't really anything that really stood out to me. Uh, I just think that he is someone who is a project. And, uh, again, you know, if you're being picked in the later rounds, you know, again, that's kind of a chip on your shoulder as well, even if you are coming from a bigger school or something. You know, people are sleeping on you. People aren't prioritizing you. So, um, I don't know. I think this guy has potential. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Caesar, Caesar out of Houston. He's definitely an interesting guy to watch. I mean, nine and a half sacks, you know, that's definitely not easy to do no matter what school you're at. So the production is definitely there. Um, so yeah, it, it's always really exciting to see those types of guys fall a little bit because then you can maybe, like you said, find yourself a hidden gem who can kind of use that momentum from a successful season to carry him into the NFL. Um, that would be really wonderful to see. Uh, my guy is Zion Tupuola Fatui. My goodness, I butchered your name. I'm so sorry, Mr. Zion. But, you know, the Bucks already have Zion McCollum. Um, I'm a big Pelicans fan, unfortunately. So Zion Williamson, I figure, you know, might as well throw another Zion in there. Um, no, <laughs> all, all jokes aside, he was kind of considered like a, a borderline first round pick. After the COVID season, he had he had a, a seven sack season, uh, which was really really impressive, especially in that condensed season. Um, but he is almost twenty four, um, so he's a bit on the older side, um, which kind of speaks to why he's more of a day three guy. He's almost consensus round seven, um, so you know. It's tough. He kind of had a, a rough few years in 21 through 23. Um, but, you know, if you're taking a, a flyer on a round seven guy, you're kind of banking on that kind of upside. And at least he's shown that he has that kind of upside. Plus, you know, the Bucks already drafted JTS. He was a Washington guy. Um, so maybe uh, ZTF in this case would be their next dude. Um, he's super physical, not really a super athletic guy, but, um, you know, he certainly makes up for it with a lot of tenacity. Um, and he'd be a, a great practice squad guy if, if nothing else. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about Z ZTF, uh, another acronym, uh, edge rusher for the bucks. That would be kind of fun. Um, I'm, I'm just hoping he's a victim of circumstance. You know, the past few years, it's been injuries and, and this and that and the other. Um, but he also played for a great school, you know, Washington, had a really successful season last year, obviously making it to the national championship game. So, um, yeah, and, and he's also got some coverage skills too. It seems to be a, a very, very big positive for him. Which, as we've mentioned before, with these edge guys, it's kind of huge for the Bucks. Um, so, yeah, that's that's our edge guys. Um, we saw if you had to pick your favorite pick from these past two positions, if you had like one guy that you're banging the table for, or I think that's a, an NFL's draft saying. But regardless, who's your favorite prospect out of these past two positions? Uh, I got to say Zach Frazier from West Virginia. I don't know. Uh, I, of all the tapes I watched, I really enjoyed his, um, especially after I found out this guy is a four-time wrestling champ. It actually yeah, kind of made a lot of sense. It made a lot of sense when I was watching it. I mean, this guy's a mauler. He's amazing. Uh, yeah. I, I love the guy. I think, if not JPJ, I think this guy, um, and I'll tell you this, Nothing against JPJ, but I wouldn't be surprised if maybe someone or a team does pick Zach Frazier before him. Uh, I think he is just right there with JPJ. So, uh, yeah, Zach Frazier is my guy. Hey, I, I and, dig it, yeah. And I, I, I want a center. I, I, I really want a center. I, I want someone to protect Baker more than anything. Uh, look, I, I, I want to prioritize the defense as well, Carter. Of course, everyone wants to. But, man, we need some protection, Carter. And I think this guy can do the job. Yeah, absolutely. And and not only that, I think almost the more important thing is that he'd be a great run blocker. Um, that's almost yeah, that's almost more important for me than protecting Baker just because they have, you know, Gadecki and Wirfs as kind of the the bookends at, on the edge. Um, the interior can kind of be a little weaker in that regard, but man, they can't be weak blocking the run, uh, as we've seen over the past few years. Um, but yeah, Zach Frazier's definitely definitely if they don't get JPJ and Zach Frazier is there, hey, that's cool too. I, I'm a really big Zach Frazier guy as well. Um, I, I'd love to, I'd love to see JPJ go to the Bucks, and that's my favorite prospect, you know, just for them in the first round. But if I had to pick my favorite fit, I'd probably go Cedric Van Pran out of Georgia, just because I don't know. My gut tells me that the Bucks are going to go edge or corner in the first round, uh, just in regards to who I think the Bucks are going to pick. 
you know, I think Cedric Van Pran would be a really, really nice, just kind of third round guy. Um, just really, really nice fit. Uh, so yeah, I mean, no matter who they pick, if they pick any of these guys, then we'll get to brag about how we were right, um, which is always the best, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, regardless, the Bucks can't go wrong, but you can't go wrong by hitting that like and subscribe button. We really appreciate y'all for tuning in. We're nearing the end of our episode. Um, we've got some more draft coverage coming up for you. Next week, we'll be talking about cornerbacks and cornerback position. It's the number one priority in our minds. Um, we wouldn't be surprised to see the Bucks taking a first round pick on this position because right now it's Jamel Dean and Zion McCollum. I, I don't know. Um, so we'll talk about it more in depth next week. So definitely stick around for that. You can also give us a follow at RBLR Sports. Um, check us out there. Like Musab mentioned, we've got some mock drafts coming out all the time. Um, you can also check out our other shows, part of this channel at the Rays, the Lightning and the Rowdy Show. We've got some great content coming out there as well. Um, but as always, thank you so much for tuning in and go Bucks. Go Bucks. Thank you for tuning into this presentation by RBLR Sports. On your way out of the stadium, please remember to like and subscribe.